Despite not being in Congress for several months now, former Speaker Kevin McCarthy begins a vengeance operation against Republicans who fired him. What is up, uh, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video and today. It is time to talk about the 2024 House elections. As most of you probably know, Kevin McCarthy has been out of Congress for several months now. And despite this fact that, hey, he's retired, supposedly, he has just announced, or at least quietly, been looking at challenging those that removed him from the speakership role. In fact, he has an entire operation focused on essentially three targets. Nancy Mace, Bob Good, and Eli Crane. Yeah, this bozo is so mad and petty about what happened that he is going to spend God knows how much money and time trying to take out those th main three. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Guys, just for a dollar a month, you can join Real American. This is the best way to support the daily content that we all know and love. So I hope and recommend you join the channel today. Now, let's be 100% clear. It is very unlikely Kevin McCarthy has really any chance of taking any of these three out. They're all incumbents and, relatively speaking, well-liked. But this entire situation is pathetic. It shows you who Kevin McCarthy really is. He doesn't give a rat's ass about the Republican majority and uniting the party. He doesn't. He cares only for himself. I mean, really? He built an entire operation to focus on, in particular, these three. What does that tell you about this guy? And he was the Speaker of the House. So let's get right into it because it's just absolutely pathetic. Kevin McCarthy's not done trying to exact revenge on the fellow Republicans who ended his Hill career. Man, this guy sounds like a very unifying voice in the Republican Party. No wonder a lot of people started to hate this guy. And this is what's known. Can you imagine what's happening behind closed doors? If this is public, I don't want to know. After a devastating ejection from the speakership that he spent 16 years pursuing, the California Republican and his allies are mobilizing to oust the eight GOP lawmakers who joined Democrats to depose him. Which, yes, there are eight, but there's really three that he's trying to target, which I mentioned, Bob Good, Nancy Bass, and Eli Crane, but we'll get to that in a second. A top McCarthy ally, Brian O'Walsh, is overseeing an attempt to recruit primary challengers to take on members of the infamous Gates 8. The Capitol's nickname for Representative Matt Gates and seven Republicans who supported his fire McCarthy push. According to six people familiar with the plans, man, d doesn't this sound like some guy that you want to run the Republican majority? I mean, th think about all the effort you have to put into this operation just to focus on eight people. Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, just thinking how ludicrous this sounds. Yes, we need an entire operation to target eight representatives. For the pettiest of reasons, absolutely worthless what McCarthy's trying to pull here. The McCarthy Revenge Campaign is ready to marshal the former Speaker's considerable donor network on behalf of Republican primary candidates who are deemed strong enough to pose a credible threat to one of the eight. So he's going to focus all of his time trying to get rid of the eight. Just think of how ludicrous that is. Yes, we got to get rid of them. But we're going to focus everything in the kitchen sink on these eight. Screw the rest of the 2024 elections. The fact that McCarthy has this much influence with some of these donors 
and he's gonna focus their resources on these eight? Are you freaking crazy? Whatever happened to his philosophy of defending every incumbent? This should tell you everything about this guy. And we've known about it for a while, but this is pathetic. These traitors chose a side with Nancy Pelosi, AOC, and uh, over 200 Democrats to undermine the institution, their fellow Republicans, and a duly elected speaker, Walsh said in a statement. There must be consequences for that decision. <laughs> Where was this for the, the clowns that impeached Trump? This vigor from McCarthy? Where? There must be consequences. What are you talking about? He just sucked. The majority of Republican voters wanted him gone. And let's well, let's face it. There are a lot of congressmen that were scared to oppose McCarthy because of this exact situation. It is not good. One clown like this has so much influence over the big donors. I mean, if it wasn't for that, he would have been thrown out months ago. Let's not kid ourselves. He would have thrown out in March. Behind the scenes, McCarthy and his allies have identified three of the Gates eight as the most vulnerable in primaries and thus the ripest targets. Nancy Mace, Bob Good, and Eli Crane. Mace and Good are already have strong challengers, but Crane still lacks a compelling prospective candidate to take him on. This, this should... Listen. I am not the biggest fan of Nancy Mace. I'm not. But what is this? Are, are, is this some kind of sick joke? Bob Good and Eli Crane. All because they opposed you. Not because they're bad on the issues. Nancy Mace, two years ago you had a valid argument. By the way, remember when Kevin McCarthy was best friends with Nancy Mace? Listen, I'm not a fan of Nancy Mace, but she had valid reasons to oppose McCarthy. That quiet work shows McCarthy's appetite for payback remains intense, even months after his October ouster as Speaker and December departure from Congress. It also illustrates that even out of office, the former Speaker and his supporters can make life miserable for his detractors, a further sign that the House GOP power struggle between burn it down hardliners and more established and conservatives is alive and well. Like I said, is it really a good thing to have this much influence with somebody like McCarthy? Is it? I don't think so. Because you get one petty asshole like McCarthy that just hates everyone that opposed him. Well, they're all gone. We're going to spend hundreds of millions trying to stop them. Walsh is acting with McCarthy's blessing. While the former speaker is not involved in the day-to-day -day work of the project, he is briefed on its progress. So he's running it. Okay, he's going to say, oh, well, I'm not actually doing the day-to-day -day work. I just oversee it. I, I just oversee the progress as our key donors. I mean, just think about what's happening here. We have arguably... The most important election in American history, at least in modern history. And this clown is focused on vengeance. McCarthy's closest ally says eight defectors should fear his influence from afar. He made clear even before retiring from Congress how angry he was. Oh, boo-hoo. Who freaking cares? You suck. You lied to everyone. Don't let him fool you. He lied to so many people. And he's wondering why he's out of Congress. How dare they? Uh, how dare they? I only misled them. Just shut up. I mean, he's claiming that Gates belongs in jail and he got into a fight with Tim Burchett. Does this guy sound stable to you? Does he? The McCarthy camp's effort may not fully pan out this cycle, however. One member of the Gates 8 said that a potential primary foe who was uninterested in a challenge recently reached out. 
to reveal details of repeated recruitment attempts by a McCarthy associate. I mean, they're putting so much effort into this. Like, really? Just for saying McCarthy shouldn't be speaker? Where was this years ago with the impeachment clouds? Where? Outside of Trump, where, where was McCarthy? Where was he? Oh, he wasn't anywhere. But when he gets affected by it, oh my goodness, the world is ending. I must throw everything at these eight. Welsh traveled to Charleston late last year to start interviewing more than a dozen candidates interested in taking on Mace. One of the strongest, Catherine Templeton, will launch a bid next week. McCarthy's allies have signaled interest in devouting significant firepower to her. I mean, you cannot just say three years ago, we must protect every incumbent to, oh, we must try to primary out eight of them. I mean, th think about how much time they started this last year. So you know damn well, you know what that means? You know what that means? They talked right as he got thrown out to these people. That is how petty he is. He didn't even wait a month. It sounds like, hey, the second he got thrown out, quick, we gotta get primary challengers ready. Templeton ran unsuccessfully for South Carolina governor in 2018 and previously served in the cabinet of then-governor Nikki Haley. McCarthy trying to get somebody... Representative Ralph Norman said, I know he's been contacting people. He described Templeton as a whip smart and a strong candidate. So it seems like that Mace is the only one that there's a good shot of her losing. She almost lost in 22, but that was with the support of McCarthy. A lot of money was spent on her. Now she doesn't have that. And it seems like that even Ralph Norman thinks that this Templeton guy is a good is a good candidate, a good opponent for Nancy Mace. And I've always said that Mace, very overrated. I don't think she's that strong of a candidate. She barely held on. I know Trump endorsed challengers, but <clears throat> she had a lot of support from people like McCarthy. So you start looking into this and you realize Mace is the only one that has a real good shot of losing. The Bob Good stuff is just absurd. I mean, Bob Good is going to hold on. The fact that people are saying that Trump should endorse a challenger, no. I doubt that he even endorses now that Bob Good supports Trump. As for Eli Crane, they even admitted there's no one running against him. So the only one I would be wary of is Nancy Mace. Which again, I am not the biggest fan of Mace. I'm just not. But I think the primary her out for this is just stupid. Of all the things she said and did, this is what you're mad about. Really? Either way, folks, let's hope this backfires in McCarthy. And let's hope that he doesn't invest $50 million trying to take out these eight. If you guys did enjoy, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.